the, the, you segue me into the story of 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 my <laughs> my introduction to Kid Capri, me me and Kid Capri. You know what I'm saying? Again, there's no there's no internet. I'm just tapes. I don't know how they look from a can of paint. You dig what I'm saying? So at this time, I'm doing the fun cut on 43rd and 10th, hottest party in the city on a Tuesday. Right. You feel me? So I'm 20 maybe, and uh, I'm in there DJing. Long story short, I st- you know I, I, I would do blends at the clubs, and you know that was part of the thing. And right. so one day, one night he there, I forget what blend it was. It might have been uh, Freddie Jackson or whatever. And uh, the booth is this big at the front cut. The door, if it opens like this, it will hit you. Right. You feel me? <laughs> so, <laughs> so Capri comes, and you know it's dark in there. He got the green. It might have been a green hoodie. It was a hoodie. You know what I'm saying? And I'm in my thing, whatever, whatever. And he pushes the door. I don't think he wants to push it that hard, but he pushed the door and it kind of kind of fucked me up. So I'm, and, and he's talking, but I, I got the headphones, so I don't understand what he's saying, but he just look aggressive. And I'm like, yo, what the fuck you doing? I'm like, yo, I'm like, yo, what the fuck? Like, what the, and I slammed the door back. All right. Stupid ass, what the fuck? Why would my best friend Frank Nitty come two minutes later? He's like, yo, he is here. I'm like, who? He like, he like, kick a pre. I'm like, it's the moment. No, 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 I got to get it off. <laughs> Where is he at? He like, he right over there. He's sitting on the couch with the same hoodie on. I'm like, you oh. just slammed the door in this dude's face. <laughs> right? I'm like, oh, shit. So I'm like, fuck it. It is what it is. I got to get it in. What was Boom. you thinking at that moment? Like, you- I ain't taking it personal. Because I, <laughs> I, 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 I know the booth was small. Yeah, you know, it was, I, was, you know, I was in the mix. So, so I play, boom, I play something else. I play something else, and, and I see him getting up. It's the weirdest thing, because I'm looking at him the whole time. I'm like, yeah, I got to kick his here. I got to get his approval somehow. Right. I see him. He kind of shakes his head. He gets up again, and he starts walking, beelining back to the booth. I'm like, oh, shit, he coming back. <laughs> so this time, he, he opens the door like, man, like, <laughs> so when he opened the door, I'm like, yo, my bad. Like, you know what I mean? I just, I ain't know, yeah. yada, yada, yada. He like, yo, forget all that. He like, yo, I just want to know your name. And I'm like, oh, yo, Tess, when he like, yo, just take it to him and walk through it. Start floated away. Yo, just take it to him. <laughs> so I'm like, that was it. That could have been my last night DJing. You got to understand, this is, that could have been my last night DJing. You dig what I'm saying? Right. I'm like, oh, shit. Yeah, yeah. Like, I got the stamp. That was it. You feel me? And it's like, it, it's, it's, a, it's, a, it's that moment where it's like, you really think something went wrong, but you just got to let it, let it, let let it, it go yeah, how it going to go. go. You feel what I'm saying? And that's that life we live, bro. Yeah. You can literally, like, you can literally, it's that, it's that infamous commercial, the cell phone commercial, when, when they get bad service for two seconds, right. and in those two seconds, the whole day go r- wrong mm-hmm. for this dude. Mm-hmm. You feel me? Right. Th- this is, yo, bro, I got a call yesterday. I, w- I could have been, my phone could have been on silent. Mm-hmm. I'm not at the garden, bro. Right. You feel me? Right. You see me? Two phones charged up. I, I, I know what this is, bro. This, these opportunities, they don't, when they come, you just got to be ready. Right. And this is part of like this DJ thing that you wouldn't know, you wouldn't notice if I ain't telling you. just think I got the laptop, I got the records, and I'm just playing the records. There's so much more that go into this DJ thing. And I never told him this, but, but him and I are like, we fight for the DJs. Yeah, yeah. Like, we take this shit so personal. When I get into arguments, I, I see a DJ song, yo, bro, why they got you in the corner? Like, it's like that. Right. Because we got to make a difference, bro. Well, what the would passion you say, is it, real. When you say difference, what would you say is the biggest difference between your era of DJs and the DJs now? Oh, my God. Are you kidding me? There's, there, well, I mean, the, the dance floor is full of tables with hookahs on them. Like, there's not even a dance floor. Mm. Don't get this started. Don't get me started with this. There's no clubs. I want both of y'all. I want to get both no, of y'all started. No, there's no clubs. You feel me? I mean, with kids, it's a little different because he's, when they book him out of town, it's like it's set up. You dig what I'm saying? Right. I'm, I, I'm, I mean, I, I get the same thing in some places sometimes, but for the most part, like in a city, in New York City, club scene dead. Mm. There, ain't no, there ain't no clubs. Everything is little lounges. It's hookahs. It's bottles on the dance floor. And I'm going to tell you how that happened. New York. The Blackberry killed before, the promoter. Before the game. quarantine, 
Well, yeah. That's a whole phones, other thing. That's one thing. But <laughs> another thing that kind of killed the clubs in New York, in my opinion, it's just my opinion, the strip club. Oh. First of all, no, that's not what killed it. Let me rewind. What I meant to say was when the thing came around where it would be four or five DJs on one party, right? Now, you know, for years, I always took an opener with me to do my shows to this day. I bring an opener with me because I want people to get a full show. You got four or five DJs on the show, everybody's playing the same shit. Everybody's trying to play the new hit record, the new right. this, new that. Right. Now you got a whole crowd of people just standing around because they heard the shit four or five times already. Right. And the continuity of the party is not where it's supposed to be. Everybody on their phone, hookah, you know, and to some people, that's considered lit. To me, you're not lit because your room is crowded. You're lit when your room, when your walls are sweating, shit is shaking. Everybody's not worried about their fucking phone. They they crazy. Experience. That's lit to me. That's always been my meaning of what that is. But you know, things happen. Um, I just think that I just think that sometimes the party. That that narrative of four or five DJs on there is what kind of made the club become a standstill a little bit. So now if we're gonna stand around, let's go to the strip club and look at some ass. Hmm. We're just gonna stand around. Yeah. Might as well stand around and look at the women. Hmm. Now the strip clubs become big. And now the clubs in New York diminish. Now it becomes lounges. Hmm. You see what I'm saying? Right. And then the reason why I don't do a lot of parties in New York is not because I don't, I can't, you know, but I'm into making a certain kind of bread. And I'm not into, you want to make all the bread. You want me to make the bread for you, but you want to make all the bread. You mm, being the You want to take it home. Right. You know what I'm saying? Like, nah, you know, we're going to do it. We're going to do it. Now, I can easily throw my own. I can promote my own shit. You know what I'm saying? Just not into doing it. I do enough shows around the country that I don't, you know, I'm good. But in New York, if I, when I come to New York, I always come and do special shit. It's always a special thing. Like, you know, if I come do the King's Theater in Brooklyn, I come do the Garden, I come do Barclays, I come, if I do a club, it's a big club. That's what I do. I don't have to be in New York all the time because I never was doing, when I started doing that, it was a certain time for me to do that. Then when I left, it was me coming back and treated like, a business, not a thing where I had to be seen all the time. Nothing wrong with that. It's just my choice. I just wanted to be. Hot ninety seven asked me to be on his on on the radio. Mano uh, Mano asked me in his in his podcast. He said, "Yo, why you wasn't a part of the whole New York radio Hot ninety seven thing? Because I didn't want to be stuck home. It's a big world out there with a lot of people in it. <coughs> if I could be in Albuquerque, New Mexico, Pine Bluff, Arkansas, you know." Alaska, Anchorage, Alaska, and touching those people. People in Alaska don't give a shit what's going on in New York. Right. People in Kentucky don't care about what's going on in New York. But if I bring it to them, it's different. You see what I'm saying? They're not listening to a New York radio station. They might now because it's apps, but at that time, they don't give a fuck of what's going on in New York. They care about what they're doing. And you better know what they like when you come to their city. Period. Right. Or you get your ass thrown up out of there, quick. <laughs> you know what I'm saying? And I've so had a lot of promoters. Research. What? Oh my God. Like a motherfucker. I've had a lot of promoters come to me. I will never get him. I will never get him. I will never get him again. Never get him again. He was terrible. This one's terrible. And um, because they come in there doing what they want. Hmm. You're going to a town that probably don't even see too many things. Mm -hmm. You know what I'm saying? Their little club that they got or whatever club they got is what, that's their premier shit. And they have their own type of music that they like that the world probably don't even know about. You go to Houston, Texas, they got a music that only Houston play. Right. But it's the biggest shit. You won't hear it nowhere else, but if you go there and don't know it, you had an issue. Better know it. You see what I'm saying? So that's, that's the job of knowing your business. And I didn't want to be stuck in just New York. I made my mark there. I did what I did. Innovate, move on, and start moving into bigger things. And I still feel like that today. You know what I'm saying? It, it, you know, do what you do and make it for everybody. That's why my radio show was called The Block Party. Because my Block Party show was new and old together. Right. Playing new shit, playing an old shit, you put it together. You go to a Block Party, everybody come, everybody enjoy themselves. They, don't matter what your age is, how you look, 
Where you come from, you enjoy yourself. So that's what the show is, and that's what I represent. It's hot for trap trapper turn smack rapper. Only smack rapper that you know is smack rappers. Got bars, I can hang with the backpackers. Trap star, I don't hang with the backpackers. I'm in the hood with the work you heard. Making fiends sleep earth, you heard. Got your baby mama thirst, you heard. Feel the flow, nigga, throw it in reverse. This the way you need to surf, you heard.